if we war on people overseas, only a matter of time before people from overseas war on us. You say you're doing this for the defence of Australia, yet in your own white paper you cannot even name an army, an, an enemy that might even threaten Australia in these times, let alone in the next 10 years. And yet there you go again, gearing up for another increase in forces in Syria, more work for the US alliance, spending our money big time. It doesn't add up, Mark. And if you're true to your soul, you won't be able to hold your head up high. And if you've got grandchildren, think of the curse you bring upon them today. We're speaking here because this is a kind of an annual event. The Global Day of Action on Military Spending. It's a campaign going all around the world, but principally in the US, where military spending is most extreme. Yesterday there was a citizens rally in Gariba Place. Move the money is their slogan. Move the money from warfare to welfare. How is it that the government can find no money for basic services like housing, that they're cutting back on the health services, that education has been privatised and now is too expensive. Graduates end up with a graduated debt. They don't become wise, they become burdened by debt. That's not the kind of country we wanted to create here after the Second World War. That's not what we wanted, but it's what we've got. Meanwhile, no money for welfare, no obstacles to military spending. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the F-35. Mark, you must be close to this project, right? This must be one of your babies. You must be watching this, the biggest ever acquisition by the Australian Defence Force, $17 billion for strike fighters, which we know are lemons. The best thing they can say about them, even in their own publicity, Lockheed Martin's publicity, is that it is now not the fifth generation miracle, miracle aircraft that was promised when the deal was first proposed. What is it now? It's the jack of all trades, but the master of none. That's what they're saying, folks. We've been sold a lemon. It was overhyped. They overspent on the budget developing it. And they've come up with a boondoggle. That's, a boondoggle is something the government spend money on to create jobs wherever. But as something for Australian defence, Mark, it's not going to deliver. And worse than that, it's going to put us behind. In terms of air superiority, this purchase puts us behind 10 years rather than advanced 10 years in technology. It's a failure. And why is there no one in defence headquarters saying, hang on a minute, let's review this project. We didn't get a voice when it was first proposed. Maybe it's the time we did speak about it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You can see it under you, can't you, Mark? All those people covering their backsides. No one wants to be the bearer of bad news about the acquisition of the F-35. And furthermore, Mark, it'd have to be not only the biggest defence acquisition program ever, the most unpopular, right? I get around, I talk to defence personnel, in private of course, they're never going to put their name on it, they too shake their heads. People are outraged about it. And how does this elevate the status of the Australian military in the eyes of the public that must pay for it through their taxes? 
They think you're dorks. I can you hear me, Mark? Dorks. We're getting tied up in such a bad deal. And don't say that you have no choice. It was a government decision. That other dork, what's his name? Pine. Public school boy dork with the crazy haircut. Yeah? He's the guy that makes the decision. No, Mark. The purpose of having a defence department is to moderate those decisions, point out the bad news, show where they're failing, show where they're succeeding. And it's not happening. It's like group think stupidity when it comes to the F-35. And talk about it. Here's the next one. Two billion dollars for service to air missiles. Hind announced the other week, the Minister for Jobs in South Australia, two million dollars for service to air missiles, presumably to fight ISIS. But hang on a minute, folks. The battle against terrorism, even proposed by people in defence, is asymmetrical. That is, the terrorists don't have air forces. They don't have planes to shoot down. So why does Australia need surface-to-air missiles when fighting ISIS? It doesn't. We're buying these for some other purpose. We're buying them and we know they'll only work if the US Alliance, the US commanders of these weapon systems say we can use them. They're defending, therefore defending Australia's forces overseas, armed forces overseas, who are working for America, yeah? They're not for the defence of Australia, they're for a fence overseas, likely targeting Russian aircrafts if people, things get tough in Syria, yeah? That's what we're buying into here. Was there any thought about this? Was there any debate in the Air Force about this? Was there any sign that you had Neurons to rub together? Come on, speak honestly to us. And now the Navy, oh God, what a mess the Navy is always in. We had a disaster recently, you remember floods? The big supply ship wasn't available. The ship's in dock, which is going to be how it is for the F-35, tarmac known. Always having something wrong with it fixed. Likewise in the Navy. So we've got these submarines. First it was the Collins class. Wonderful submarines, a bit noisy, yeah? But we solved the bugs, except for one big bug. No one wants to ride in them. They can't be crewed. I've got a solution for this problem, maybe. Maybe you listen to this one, yeah? We stop calling them death machines and we start calling them underwater love shacks, yeah? Go for a holiday, have a good time underwater. That'll get a crew, hey? Maybe. No, come seriously. Fifty billion dollars being committed for submarines that we don't want and don't need. They're just toys. Toys for the Navy. Toys for the, the, the technicians and the engineers who will have to fix the bugs in them. Wonderful playthings but they do not add to the security of Australian defence. Worse, they add to its insecurity. A submarine is a death machine. It doesn't have any other purpose. It can't carry cargo. It's not going to be able to rescue people in times of natural disaster brought on by climate change. They're there to stop shipping. And what's the major shipping we're dealing with in our corner of the world? It's the amazing productivity of China. The factories of China producing goods for the Western world. We've never had it so good in terms of material stuff. You ought to go to the dump sometime and see how much stuff just gets thrown out. We've got so much stuff. Why would we be wanting to be threatening shipping in the South China Sea? How is that part of Australian defence? It can be understood in terms of 
the USA wanting to hold back the power of China to somehow contain its hegemony by surrounding it with bases on land and under the water. But that's not ours. We don't gain anything from that, right? That's US madness. So they steal it. They steal our army. They steal our navy. And they steal our air force. That's the fact of it, folks. You are not defending Australia as we understood it back in 1942. Far from it. What you're doing is preparing for war with our major trading partner. Sleepwalking into this war. Justifying. Brown nosing it up to the US commanders and the US politicians. Hoping that this is some sort of insurance policy that when we really do get the trouble that your wars will bring to us for sure, the US will stand beside us and defend us from any invading force or takeover. Well, wishful thinking, I think, and also lazy thinking. It stops you thinking about what an independent foreign policy would look like, an independent peace and peaceful foreign policy would look like. Instead, you put your nose down, watch your career, and don't rock the boat, even though the boat is sinking. Don't rock the boat. So Mark, that's my call to you. Stop this erosion of the honor of the Defense Forces. You can believe your own propaganda for a while, but you know this is dangerous. The path you've set your feet upon can only bring us to disaster, only a matter of time. Let's start thinking now about an independent and peaceful Australia. And let's start thinking what a defence force would be if it truly defended Australia. What would its issues be if it was truly a defence force? Well, the first one pops to mind is climate change. How can the Defence Force help the Australian people in times of climate emergency? Well, for this, I promise you, you don't need guns. You won't need submarines. You won't need F-35s. But the organising capacity of the Defence Force could do a lot of stuff on the ground. They can build bridges in the time of flood. They can transport refugees. Yeah? They can ease the suffering if they were to focus on this as their responsibility instead of flitting off to foreign wars and getting a bit of blood on your hands. So that's the challenge of these times. These times of permanent war, 17 years of war now, no end in sight, no end promise. And you want us to respect you for this? The big sacrifice you make furthering your careers by killing people, native people in their native land? Uh-uh, not gonna happen. Wake up, let's cut military spending. Let's start investing in peacemaking rather than war making. Let's bring the SAS home and rehabilitate them. They're crazy. And the people who've gone through the SAS, the war in Afghanistan and Iraq, and are now in command positions, I say, unless they have repented, they are crazy. Not to be trusted. Post-traumatic stress syndrome, but hidden, managed, but inside inside, seizing madness. That's where the Defence Department's got it. So bring back the SAS, bring back the Air Force from 
Syria and Iraq 